Hello, welcome to The Kitchen Spy. My name is Kate and this is a different video today. This is a favourites video, so I've got some of my favourite cookbooks here to show you and also a recipe for a gnocchi bake, which was um, just a kind of made up thing, but it was absolutely delicious. So if you're here for just the recipe and just in case you don't want to hear me waffling on about my favourite cookbooks, I've bookmarked it down below so you can jump straight to the recipe if you want to. Otherwise, um, stay with me and I'll show you some of my favourite cookbooks. I hope that you are safe and well and uh, that you've had a really good week. And I apologise in advance for the extensive length of this video because I just did not realise how much I can waffle on about cookbooks and I had done a kind of as as we were going through voiceover but I've had to re-record it because I couldn't get it to work. I seriously need to work on my editing skills. Anyway so here we are this is just a series of my favourite cookbooks it's by no means all of the cookbooks that I have and it's definitely not all of the cookbooks that are my favourites but it's just some of the ones that I use most often and that I would like to recommend to you. So this first one is the Sue Kreitzman's Complete Low Fat Cookbook and it is a really good book with some absolutely fabulous recipes in it. So um, lots of really good recipes that we, I've done lots of them and it's more uh, of a kind of way of eating so it explains to you about um, why to have a low fat diet and how to have a low fat diet and some hints and tips about how you can make things stretch further so using for example roasted aubergine to bulk out mints which is not only good for the budget but it's also good for the fat content and things so it gives you some really good handy hints and tips and I've continued to use those tips whether I'm cooking from this book or not in most of my cook cooking really so yeah I would definitely recommend that so that's Sue Kreitzman complete low fat cookbook I think I talked about it on my last meals of the week so sorry if I'm banging on about it but it is a really really good book I think it's from the 90s so you might even find it in charity shops or um, you might be able to still get it online but uh, either way definitely recommended a really really good book so the next couple of books I want to recommend are by Rosemary Conley. So in the 90s, she ran the Rosemary Conley Slimming Club things and used to go there and have exercise, but also she promoted a low fat uh, diet to lose weight. And it, yeah, it was quite successful. And over the years, I've used these books a lot, as you can see by the horrible stains and the writing on them. Um, but th there are some really good recipes in here. This devil chicken and the Thai chicken there, probably not very authentic Thai, but we enjoy it. And we do that recipe quite a lot, as you can see by the state of the pages. But yeah, um, cookbooks for me are about working with them so if they get torn or whatever you know I mean I don't do that deliberately but I also don't worry about it and this is the second book she did we don't use this quite as much because I always think the second book in any series is never quite as good as the first um, but yeah Rosemary Conley books and again you might be able to get these in charity shops and things but definitely well worth looking for I'm not sure what she's doing now whether um, um, she's still writing books or, or what I don't know but um, certainly worth going back and having a look at these books uh, the next book is this uh, The Complete Kitchen by Weight Watchers so um, yeah all of the books so far have been about dietary um, styles if you like so low fat or Weight Watchers or whatever um, but I don't only use uh, these kind of books but here's a Slimming World books, a book too and these are actually just to represent the fact that I've got loads of Weight Watchers books and loads of sw Slimming World books and even though I don't um, operate those diets they've still got some really lovely uh, recipes in which are fairly low calorie because of course 
all of these diet plans are actually based around a calorie deficit, however they dress it up. Um, I was really successful on Weight Watchers and I lost a lot of weight on Weight Watchers, um, but um, I found it difficult in the end. And so now I operate a calorie controlled diet and that keeps me on the straight and narrow. Then um, my absolute number one cook in the entire world is Delia Smith. I just love her recipes. They never go wrong. Well, they haven't ever gone wrong for me anyway. If you do what she says in her recipe, you will end up with something that tastes absolutely delicious. And this is the complete cookbook by Delia, again from the 90s, I think, um, but well worn. And I've just cooked so many things out of this book. And in fact, even now, um, when I do a roast dinner, I I always check this even though I know what I'm doing I know the temperatures I know the times I just check that book and uh, one of my friends I know does the same Joe she does the same and we laugh about that anyway um, so uh, yeah so she also did these uh, seasonal books and this is the summer book and way back in the day before email was a thing uh, if any of you are old enough to remember that I wrote to the BBC because I, I was so in love with Delia Smith and asked for a photograph and she didn't have a photograph but she did send me a book plate and she also sent me a lovely letter which is here so I've got that a signed letter and a book plate from Delia Smith with a stain on it but I think that's entirely appropriate for a cookbook so again if you've never tried any Delia then I would recommend that and um, again with Mary Berry just like all of the others this book is just here to represent all of the Mary Berry books that I've got which are many and varied along with the Delias and again Mary is the kind of person that you can really trust with a recipe if she says it's going to work it will work and this is by DK it's published by them and they're quite a cheap publisher actually so you will find this book it's quite a new book and I think it's probably an amalgamation of a lot of her other books I think it's got 600 recipes and it's a really really good book um, so yeah this Mary Berry book is brilliant brilliant and very much recommended so yeah like I was saying um, I've got loads of her books and loads of Delia's books and um, I think altogether I've got somewhere between two and three hundred cookbooks um, so I'm always running out of shelf space uh, so they're stacked all over the place I need to sort them <laughs> um, this is um, another range of books that I'd like to recommend and this is Nigel Slater and the Kitchen Diaries so less recipes really but um, if you enjoy reading about food and you like the narrative and the explanation behind things these books are really great to read so they're the Kitchen Diaries I think they're either four or five volumes I can't remember I've got them all um, but there's a kind of some diary so quite a lot of prose in there and some other some recipes as well um, but he says make things like it that you've got left over in the fridge like half a partridge and because <laughs> we all have that in the fridge but anyway they're really good and um, again recommended I must stop saying recommended then on to these pinch of nom cookbooks so this is um, a, a couple of ladies called Kate and Kay and they started a blog at first I think and I think they would base these on the Slimming World principles and they did used to have the sin values on there but I think they had to stop using those because obviously that belongs to Slimming World even though I think uh, Slimming World obviously benefited from their recipes that they put out um, but these books are really worthwhile so um, the first book uh, the pinch of nom the one on the right there and then this second book which I haven't used as much but they are very flavoursome um, so if you like really well flavoured and tasty interesting food these books would come again highly recommended from me um, everything I've done out of there is delicious um, some of them are a bit of a faff but I think it's worth it and I don't mind having a faff when I'm cooking. The only thing I would say is that with every this and every book, even if it tells you the calorie count on the recipe, protect your own weight loss or your own maintenance by making sure that you measure and you weigh everything so that you know exactly what's gone into your meal. And that way you can be sure that you're protecting your weight loss. And uh, what I do is I use an app called NutriCheck 
and on there there's thousands and thousands of foods that you can scan by barcode plus all the ordinary foods as well so definitely worth a look and so this is not actually a cookbook as you can see this is a notebook which was given to me um, a few years ago by my lovely friend Max and she gave this to me for a gift and I don't know whether she knows that but I use it all the time in the kitchen at the moment so I've got loads of notebooks that I use for various things but this is my current one in the kitchen so if I've got recipes that I find that are loose then I pop them in here and this was seeded banana bread and that was from our local village show and a competition that I entered and I actually won that one so uh, really pleased about that so you get a rosette and a card and three pounds or something but anyway it's the entering that counts so yeah and then what I do is it, um, in the past I've made things and they've been really delicious and I've never been able to replicate them so what I do now is I make sure that if I do do new recipes I've got YouTube now of course but um, if I do do new recipes I write things down and then I also make notes um, so for example there that it was really tasty which is good and it made four portions and there it had got I think it says 3SP per portion so that means at that point in time I was probably on Weight Watchers and that was three smart points per portion so I know um, exactly what I'm going to be cooking and I just love writing things down <laughs> about the food that I cook and hopefully learning lessons as as you go along so for example here on this soup um, I have written down um, it was too spicy uh, amid dried chili flakes so obviously um, I, I, it was it was nice but too spicy so I've crossed out the dried chili flakes and I have actually got one whole red chili in there with the seeds in so yeah I'm not surprised but it's all about cooking's all about learning um, and making sure that you learn from your mistakes as well so that's what I do um, the things that I invent myself I make sure that I've got them in a book so that I can replicate them if I want to go back to them in the future and yeah I absolutely love notebooks I've got notebooks everywhere for various different things and for my birthday last week my husband bought me a lovely new leather bound notebook which um, is now my kitchen spy <laughs> notebook anyway so um yeah there's um some of my favorite cookbooks like i say i've got hundreds of cookbooks and i just love reading them um there's always a pile of them next to my bed um and i'm always just reading them and just getting ideas and even if i don't replicate the recipes exactly they give me ideas now I um, omitted to put this book on the table because it was actually in the lounge because this weekend I am going to be making a chicken madras from this book so I was just um, uh, checking it out um, but this is the Hairy Dieters uh, cookbook and I think it's an amalgamation of a couple of books that they did when they did they did a television program where they took some people and worked out low calorie recipes and helped them to lose weight and this book is absolutely brilliant uh, not muscles which are disgusting Ugh. anyway but um, I don't know why I showed you that if I think they're disgusting but I'm sure some of you like them anyway it's got some really really lovely recipes in and I've never cooked anything again from this book that hasn't been absolutely delicious and they put the calories in there but again like I said earlier um, if, if I'm responsible for the calories that go into my mouth so I just make sure that I weigh and measure everything and I don't find it a nuisance because I I do it so often I just get used to it and it's just a part of my life now um, but um, yeah I do think that's a really good habit to get into though because you don't realize how how big some portions are um, I, I, I have when I have pasta now I have a hundred grams of pasta and that's a huge portion but I think I was having more before I even started measuring it anyway there you go I'm waffling again 
So this is one of my, uh, I'm calling it antique, it's not really antique, I think it's from the 1920s and this is um, a, a, a lady called Elizabeth Craig and I've got quite a few of her cookbooks and this is cookery and household management and this is the type of book that tells you that you need to get your parlour maid to clean the salmon that you fished from the river at the end of your country estate <laughs> that kind of thing you know where the scullery maid does this and the butler does that and make sure the housekeeper is keeping your budget properly anyway uh, I don't have any of those things but um, I just thought I'd share this about losing weight and I found these bookmarks that's my auntie Betty I don't know why she's in there uh, that's my mum and dad and those are some random people I have no idea who they are um, but I just think it's interesting the way that um, losing weight has changed it and it's so here it says eat slowly and at regular intervals like okay is that going to help well maybe you eat less if you eat slowly but then it says give up all condiments ketchups chutneys mustard and horseradish <laughs> oh, that's going to really help and then of course um de avoid highly seasoned foods so you know where now actually losing weight is all about making the most of what you've got and making sure that what you eat is flavorsome and interesting in the olden days i think it was all just about cutting everything everything out and making it really bland and maybe that way you just ate less I don't know but I absolutely love these old cookbooks I've got loads of them and uh, I've got some from um, like the 1800s like the 1890s and 1870s and what have you and those are even worse about you know the servants and things because obviously people who were reading cookbooks at that point came from um, a, a class that could afford them anyway so there you go that's just a little bit about my cookbooks and I'm sorry if I waffled on about them um, please uh, accept my apologies <laughs> but I, I just love them anyway what we're going to do now is look at the gnocchi bake recipe and if you've just joined us at this point because you didn't want to hear me banging on about cookbooks then welcome to this video so um, yeah I haven't had gnocchi for years I don't know why because I really like it and I I just decided to do a gnocchi bake and I just did my own thing with it and it turned out just way better than I could have anticipated. Um, I know self praise is no recommendation but this I'm telling you it was a delicious it was a kind of thing that as you were eating it you were making like weird like mm, mm, noises. Anyway let's uh, have a look at um, what we did. Okay, so in terms of ingredients, what I've got here is six rashers of back bacon and trimmed of all fat. So I've taken as much as I can off and I use scissors to do that. Then salt, uh, some mixed herbs, some chopped tomatoes, some uh, black pepper. Then here I've got one large onion, which I've chopped quite finely. I've got three cloves of garlic and a chilli. I've used a green chilli, but you can use whatever you've got. Some parmesan to go on top and a, a pepper. And I happen to have an orange one to hand. A ball of light mozzarella. And then this bag of gnocchi. And this says it serves three people. And in fact, it was perfectly uh, right for three people. And then we've got a... Um, stock cube in 300 ml of hot water. Now I'm actually cooking this at the caravan so if everything looks a bit different that's why. Uh, the saucepan shouldn't because I've got exactly the same saucepans here as I have at home, well mainly anyway. Um, so I've just got um, what is a wok really uh, with a little bit of oil in because I haven't got any spray oil here and I'm just going to fry off the onion until it's nicely brown and you saw on the back ring there I just got a saucepan of water which I brought to the boil. So uh, once the onion's browned, I popped in the garlic and the chilli and then once all that had been done and uh, cooked for a little bit, then I added the bacon and I just want to cook that off until it's nicely brown. 
and then when it is we can go in with the rest of the ingredients so here we've got the tin of tomatoes and I'm also going to put this stock in so um, yeah chicken stock cube with a um, 300 mils of hot water and then I just pop the pepper in and mix that all through I'm sorry the camera is really shaky um, I didn't take my tripod with me and I should have done so um, I'll take that next time I do anything cook wise at the caravan anyway here's the gnocchi and it only takes two minutes to cook so you don't have to cook it for very long and when it's cooked it actually very conveniently rises to the top of the pan so you know it's cooked and you just need to scoop it out of the pan there and then just drain it off uh, in a colander or a sieve and then once you've done that and the sauce has reduced down then just um, pop the gnocchi in and then just stir it around quite gently you don't want to be breaking them down any more than they have to um, this was really delicious I have to say I was delighted with it and I will definitely be making it again so once you've got it all mixed through put it into an oven proof dish um, and just make sure it's all evenly spread out. I'm a bit obsessed about making sure that each portion is as um, uh, is the same so I kind of move bacon bits around or peppers or whatever to make sure that each portion is roughly the same. My husband says I count peas when I serve up. I don't but he says I do. Anyway then once I've um, counted all the pieces of bacon and peppers in each portion I, oh, I sound like an idiot. Uh, I tore up the light mozzarella ball and and I just covered the top of the bake in that um, and the light mozzarella just it well to me it, it tastes just as good and then I've got the parmesan on top there so we've got the mozzarella and then just some parmesan as much as you want to put on top and then I've sprinkled that with some cayenne pepper or you could use paprika and you pop it in the oven until it gets all golden brown so you're really just looking for the colour because everything's cooked already um, and I think this took about 20 minutes and here it is all out of the oven it just well anything with melted cheese on in my mind is just beautiful so once it's out of the oven I just served it up and um, I hadn't got any salad to serve with it I, I, I'd, I'd left a bag at home unfortunately but um, I would have served a salad with it but here it is all served up and it was 489 calories per portion so this made three really generous portions so we had a portion each and then the next day we had half a portion each for our lunch so nothing got wasted so there you are, uh, my favourite cookbooks and a delicious gnocchi bake recipe and it is delicious I promise. Um, if you give it a go please let me know what you think. I'm sorry this video has been so very long, <laughs> just, I can't believe it when uh, uh, I, I didn't realise I was going to be banging on for so long about the cookbooks um, so maybe next time I'll do less cookbooks and um, a, a shorter video. Anyway if you want to hear more about the cookbooks books or see more of the ones that I've got and especially perhaps some of the antique books which are just worth looking at because they're just so interesting well I think they are then please let me know and if um, there's anything in particular you would like me to cook or you want to make any comments then please do I really love interacting with you guys so thanks very much for watching if you are a subscriber already I really appreciate that and thank you and if you're not yet a subscriber and you feel like you might want to join our channel and our little group of people we've got here well not so little now amazingly we're over 1500 so that's really good then give the subscribe button a click and I look forward to seeing you on meals of the week uh, recipe videos and of course food hauls so once again thanks so much for watching you take care stay safe bye bye